Welcome back to Little Digital Learners. Today is video number three in the video series that I have done for the most recent Seesaw feature updates on the creative tools and other aspects of their program. Now, this is probably the most important one yet. Um, I've seen a lot of questions on various Facebook groups and um, with my colleagues about how to further streamline activities, make it so it's not overwhelming for students to look at their to-do list and be overwhelmed and shut down or even families be overwhelmed and know, you know where to start and where to finish for just that day's work. What is live? What is independent? So, get ready. Seesaw has released the student activity link. Now, you may think that sounds kind of simple, but now with the student activity link, you can create daily menus, schedules, or choice boards to be your hub for students, um, that's how you would assign it, and then students can navigate by clicking, using another new feature, clicking the embedded link on whatever, say, their task was to do the morning journal. They can click on the link and that will take them to the activity all within Seesaw. And so, again, you're not navigating outward. If you combine all of these new features with the embedded links, the embedded video, you can even screen grab a YouTube video and put it in. And then now the um, student choice links, you can keep your primary students or if you prefer the upper grade students, but this is really important for primary students. You can keep them all within the Seesaw platform. I say it over and over again and my colleagues make fun of me. My word is streamline. You have to, and especially in this scenario where you're going back and forth between blended and distance learning, um, you have to streamline for both families and students to make things as simple as possible. No one has done this before other than in the spring, and we're all new to it. We're all navigating it, so let's try and make it as streamlined as possible, but also as effective as possible. Um, I know in my district now we're giving out grades and doing assessments based on learning, so that's a game changer, and we need to be working more efficiently. Um, so. I'm gonna show you how to get the student link and um, some different ideas on how to use it. All right, let's go. All right, you guys, are you ready for this? The long awaited ability to share student activity links is now live. Um, in today's video, I'm gonna go over two different ways that I see it being useful. I'm sure there are many, many more, but to get started, I think that these two ways um, will be most beneficial and easiest to understand just from the get-go. Um, again, this feature just came out, and so I'm sure there's a lot to learn about it um, and a lot to navigate through, but in the little bit that I've been playing around with it, I have some tips and tricks for you. Okay, so I am looking at um, the student perspective of the schedule that I created, or um, it could be a Bitmoji classroom that you create with the student activity links assigned as an activity. The other one I'm going to show you is as an announcement. Um, both work just fine. It's really your perspective on how you want students to experience this. Now, Assigned as an activity, I plan to use schedules every single day. So I plan to take the first two to three weeks to really instill um, the procedures and the expectations for how to navigate this. Of course, there's going to be certain strategies that are going to make it easiest for kids. It's not always self-explanatory, especially with little learners. Um, so it's important that you establish those procedures very clearly. So for this, they are not going to go to add response just yet. They will do that at the end of the day. But for right now, to get their activities um, and the information for the day, they're going to click on this image. 
All right, so you can see Thursday's schedule. Over here, I have arranged for all of the live times to be listed, and I plan to put the Zoom link here to our meetings and um, the subjects that will be covered. And down here is my little play button. Um, we are currently split into two cohorts. Uh, we're full distance learning, but the district plans to be fluid enough with our scheduling to be able to go back to blended um, in-person learning whenever we have the chance. So this tells the students that if you're in cohort A, you are doing the morning instruction with us. Um, these assignments though are for all students. They will all be doing the same work. Um, so they stay pretty similar. Some things change throughout the week, but most of my stuff, um, like morning meeting and SEL, we do that every morning. That's how we take attendance. Um, phonics and math menu, those are our centers. So they have five choices to do, one for each day of the week. And um, 20 minutes of reading and daily journal. Those all stay the same. So the kids, again, will be very familiar with the procedures and expectations um, for those activities. But I just change out the content based on the skill that we are focused on. All right, so you can see that these little buttons um, highlight when I go over them. So I'm going to click on one and it's going to open an activity in a new um, screen or a new tab. And this is going to be beneficial because the students will go in and complete that activity. And then um, I'll tell them to exit out of that tab and navigate to their original tab. This is going to take some practice, but at least they know where to find their daily schedule each time. It's going to be right there. They can go back to it. All right, so this is my activity. I'm going to go to add response. And then this activity uses an embedded video um, to act as a virtual dice, which the kids really like. And so their directions are to roll the dice and then draw and record as they read that column. All right, so I rolled a number four. They would go through and they would start with the sounds and then they can add a consonant in front of each of these to make their own words. Then they would add their check mark. All right. And they would send it in. All right, now you can see down here, which is a feature I need to play around with more, but it's another update that students can send in multiple of the same activity. So if it has, say, this has the same pages that you want them to do over and over again, or it's the same activity or reflection that they do every week, um, now it will show if this is all one student, it will show their different responses. So that's a cool um, little bonus feature. Now that they're done, they would just exit and they'll go back to their um, schedule and then they can keep going throughout the day. The last thing when you're doing it from an activities perspective is they will be instructed to add response. And I have, um, I have the drag feature of the green check mark that I have inputted as a graphic and they will just be asked to drag and check off all of the activities that they did, have it be like a little checklist. Um, you can see my little things are a little bit annoying, but um, it will cover them up, all right? And then um, I like to do an exit ticket or a re reflection, so then they would respond to whatever the prompt is here at the end of the day and check it off, and that will be the last activity that they submit for the day. All right, another student perspective. The previous was activities taking the daily schedule and assigning it as an activity with links to that day's activities to be completed. Um, so that is something that they would go into their activities folder and they would navigate throughout the different links. And then when they're done, they would drag and drop to check off everything and turn it in. All right, another way is to send out an announcement with the same document 
and the same hyperlinks. It would be created the same, which I'll show you in just a minute, um, but there's a couple of different things um, from the student's perspective. So if you did it that way, students would actually go to their inbox and that is where they get announcements versus their activities tab. And really, if you streamline to have all activities on a daily schedule, they really would never have to go to the activities tab other than to check if they have anything left to do. Um, so if I go to the inbox, and this would actually, um, I haven't decided what I will do, but I'm leaning towards sending it out as an announcement because it's less overwhelming for the students. All right, I'm going to click on the image. All right, you can see that the image has loaded and it looks very similar to the activities portion that I just showed you. Um, it has all of the active links and their schedule. Um, the only thing that it does not have is the drag and drop um, for the check marks, which I'm kind of okay with. Um, like I said, it's gonna be a personal decision. It works pretty similar in both situations. So if my student was to go and click on their phonics menu, which is like our center work, they would click on it and it would open in a new tab. Um, What's unique about this that I found in navigating is if you look at the top, because I said you would always navigate back to the original tab, um, when you're in your inbox, it's gonna have your class name rather than just Seesaw. So that was something that was beneficial. Um, so that they it kind of is different. They know which one to navigate back to, to get back to the schedule. All right, and so here's the activity. They would do their ad response. Um, this is another activity you can check out in my one of my other videos about hyperlinking. And um, this is their menu, and they are to do one activity a day and save as a draft until they're all done. So they can go and they can click on the activity that they want to do that day, complete it, and then save it as a draft. Then when they are all done, save as draft, they would exit out. Um, and that would submit their work for the day. So I would close that and then go back to my schedule that I kept open and I can move on to the next thing. All right. So those are two different student perspectives. Um, find what fits your class best. Again, you can do this with the Bitmoji classroom and all of that fun stuff. For me personally, I like to keep things really neat and organized for my kids. Um, I love the interactive aspect of the Bitmoji Classroom, but on a daily basis, I think I'm going to stick to something more like this. All right, so I'm gonna hop over and I'm gonna show you how I created this. So from the teacher's perspective, um, all assignments that you want to share or activity links you want to share to your class to be completed need to be assigned to the class first. So if you go to the community library and you grab an activity link to share with your students, when they go to click on it, it's going to say this activity is not assigned to the student. So make sure you pick out your activities that you want, assign them all to the class, and then you can grab those links. So what you would do is you would go to the dot, 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 get student link, copy, awesome. And then I would hop on over to the document I was editing. Let's see. So that would be my Thursday schedule. Um, and you would edit this the same on the Creative Canvas, whether it was an announcement or an activity. So you would follow these st same steps. So I should have used one that I don't already have done. But what you would do is um, grab a shape. And if you want more detail on how to hyperlink, I will link that video um, below so that you can watch this in more detail because I'm just gonna zip on by. So there's my shape. I don't care what color, really what size it is, um, but I care about the placement. So I will explain that in a minute. So I'm gonna go to dot, 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 link,
and I'm going to paste the link. All right, so this little circle, this is why I care about where the size or where it, the placement of the box, because I want that little circle to be in a, in a certain place. And the color, again, doesn't matter. All you're going to do is click order, send to back, and then I always lock my links because there's no need for them to move. All right. And then the last thing, if you wanted to do a checkmark aspect or emojis or anything, you can just um, insert an image and stack them for however many checkboxes you have. And then you would check and save and you would be all done. Pretty awesome, right? Um, there is also the opportunity to link directly in um, I'm saying this last because it's not my favorite way to do it. I like the streamlined look, but if I go here to link and I paste my student link here, it's going to look like this. And that doesn't give us much direction. Um, again, you can probably just... I guess you can just minimize it and do the same thing um, and send it to back. But I like to just make the shapes. All right. So I guess it's the same. Um, so you can do whatever you prefer, but I don't like the thumbnail to show because I think that's just more confusing. And then we're going to save. All right, so I hope that that answered some questions about the long-awaited ability to share student activity links. Like I said, this is so very new, um, but I was excited to look into all that could be done with it. Um, I'm sure we'll figure out more ideas and maybe a few challenges with it, but that's why we have such a great community of Seesaw educators. And um, reach out to me with any questions. I don't work for Seesaw. I'm a Seesaw ambassador, and I am just so passionate about the program, and I'm kind of excited that this situation is forcing Seesaw into the laps of so many educators because now they can see how powerful a tool it really is. If you found this tutorial helpful, please click the red subscribe button and stay tuned for more educational technology tips and tricks.